If you've worked on projects with a lot of assets, then you know how time consuming it can be to hunt down, preview, and import all the assets into After Effects. For audio and video files, you have to play each clip, and if it's a Premiere Pro project, you have to import the sequence or open Premiere just to see if it's the thing you need. Well, there is actually a tool that lets you browse files with previews directly inside After Effects and Premiere. And I don't mean just video and audio files. We're talking about AAPs and Premiere Pro sequences with video previews, as well as Photoshop and Illustrator documents, fonts, presets, scripts, and I could go on. This and quite a bit more is what the AE Viewer tool does, which I'll be reviewing today. Hi, I'm Andrew Marston, and today we'll be going over AE Viewer for After Effects, which I've found to be extremely intuitive to use and also a huge time saver, especially when I'm sifting through large packs of stock assets. So if you've been on the fence about buying the paid version of AE Viewer, hopefully this review helps you decide. In this video, you'll learn all about file and folder previews in AE Viewer, the multiple ways to navigate your files, how to quickly add and use assets, how to separate comps into their own projects using the pre-render feature, how to create and install template and asset packs, the differences between the paid and free versions, as well as some points to consider before buying. Also, I'll be using the paid version in this video, AE Viewer Pro, but if you wanna follow along, there's also a free version available on aescripts.com. All right, here we are in After Effects and we have AE Viewer set up on the left side of the screen. I do usually give AE Viewer its own monitor. I find it a little bit more efficient to give it more space, but for these purposes, we'll just have it on the left side of the UI. And the first thing you probably noticed are previews for folders and files, which are hugely helpful in my opinion. And I should point out that I have set up these folders and files specifically to show off what AE Viewer can do, the types of files it can give you previews for. And they kind of fall into four different categories. So you have the Adobe files, for example, here's an After Effects file. Let me change the layout here. And you can actually specify a duration of a specific timeline, a specific comp within After Effects files to, for a viewer to render a preview from, which is just phenomenal. Same with Premiere Pro project sequences. You can say from this sequence, render a preview from this duration on the timeline. And of course you also have Illustrator files, which just the previews generate automatically, Photoshop documents, and even Mogurts, which I believe at this point, the preview comes from the first frame of the Mogurt. I might be wrong, but it's still better than just having a generic icon instead of an actual preview. Then you can also have presets. Now, if it's a default preset that ships with After Effects like these, then the previews will be automatically generated. And these are cool because if you have, for example, this is a these are text presets. If you have a text layer selected and you double click one of these, then it just automatically applies right from a viewer onto your text layer. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. But if you have a custom preset that you made or you, someone passed on to you, there won't be a preview. You ha you'll have to create that yourself which I've done here. It's not a hard process, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that you would have to generate those previews on your own. So aside from Adobe um, files, which is by itself amazing, you also have your standard media files like JPEGs. It'll play back video files like QuickTime files, MP4s, sound files. So if you hover over a sound file, I, I, don't, I don't know why I picked that one. I, may, I probably just need to grow up. But if you hover over a sound file, just like with video files, then you get a preview immediately. PNGs with transparency, even some vector files like EPS. And aside from that, we also have data and scripts. So here we have a JSX JavaScript file, just an After Effects script and a GIF preview of what happens when you run it, as well as some data files like CSV and JSON. And these are just a few examples. And last but not least, we have font files. And not only do these give you a preview of what the font looks like, you can also customize that under settings. You can put some other sort of preview font like, we'll just say test. Okay, and now we can see, oh, our text test will look like this. And if one of these looks good with your text layer selected, you can just double click it and it will apply the font right from AE Viewer. And I'll put a big list on screen of all the file formats that AE Viewer supports because I haven't shown all of them. At least at the time of the recording, these are all the file formats that AE Viewer can handle. 
So for the sake of transparency, one more time, I did set up all these files and folders ahead of time to show off AE Viewer's preview capabilities. But if I were to navigate to a folder that I hadn't set up, like here's my inspiration folder, you can see that AE Viewer does its best to pull previews and like this video file plays back just fine. But if you were gonna sell files commercially, like as a template pack, then it would probably be a good idea to go in and set every preview by hand. All right, moving on to navigation. It works just like you'd expect it to work. It works like Finder or Explore on Mac and PC. You just click on folders to see what's inside them. There's a back button and a forward button. And if you click and hold the back button, you actually can see a history of the folders you've recently viewed. And inside of folders, you can even mark specific files as favorites. And then if you click this favorites button, it'll filter out to only show your favorites for that folder. You can also click the file path to edit that and you can change the view between three different looks. You have your default thumbnails, and you can change the, the size of these thumbnails. You have list view, and then I showed it before, but sort of like a spotlight feature view as well. And at the top, if you click the folders tab, which I already had revealed, but I'll click it again, it reveals a sidebar. And at the bottom of that sidebar is a very familiar looking folder file tree structure. So you can easily dive into your various folders on your hard drives. And at the top is a quick access section. So if there's a, a folder that you access a lot, like sound effects or some compositing elements, we'll just use Peter Quinn's art parts, for example, um, then you can just click and drag that folder to the quick access so that you can always quickly get to the contents of that folder. And lastly, in this navigation section, let's talk about collections, which are quite handy. So every file that you favorite while using AE Viewer, although it can be filtered to be viewed within that folder, they're all also collected in this collections all favorites category right here. And you can also create custom collections. So for example, we'll create one called textures. We'll go back to our Peter Quinn art parts and make sure collections is open. And then you can just click and drag these files into your collection to create sort of like a custom mood board or if there are sound effects like just for UI or just for impacts. In this case, you created a mood board for a big data project. And also it doesn't copy the files on your hard drive. It just creates a reference. So collections don't take up any extra space. So once you find a file that you want to add to your project, it's as simple as just double clicking it. And then if it wasn't already, an AE Viewer folder will be added to your project panel with that file inside and that file will be added to your timeline. And if you don't wanna just add it to your timeline, you can right click on the file and there's a couple different options. You can import it only, so it just shows up in your project panel. Import and add is the same as double clicking. It puts it on the timeline. Import and replace will actually replace the item. So if I click import and replace here, that item replaces the selected item on my timeline, but both are still in my project panel. And aside from that, you can import and create a comp, you can reveal and explore, you can even rename the file or open it in your default program, which is especially relevant for like Adobe files. So everything I've set up till now is true for most file types, but there are a few with uh, slightly different options. So for example, this Premiere Pro project, if I right click, then there's an option to create preview. And if I click that, it'll walk me through the process of creating a custom preview for this file. Same is true for AEPs, FFX, um, I believe uh, scripts and uh, data files. And speaking of scripts, if you double click a script, then it just runs the script. But a viewer does also have this scripts tab, which on the, opens a sidebar that lists all the scripts that you have installed in your scripts UI folder in the support folder for After Effects. And it has this cool feature called add category, where I think I have to scroll to the bottom. Here we'll call it new category, and we can just drag this up. And you basically can create dividers, which can even be, their color, their color can even be customized for slightly easier navigation and organization to deploy scripts. So just to really reinforce how efficient a viewer can make your workflow, I'm gonna go ahead and try to customize this look a little bit with some texture and maybe a nice organic reveal. So I'm gonna go into my Peter Quinn, my PQ grit kit, and quickly we can preview any of these files just by hovering over them. And I'm gonna go with this brown washi paint, for example. We're gonna drag that above our background and set the blending mode to overlay. Now we've got a nice little animated texture. And if we wanted to reveal this text in a more organic way, I know that in the Peter Quinn art part, 
works. There's quite a few options here. Um, and we'll go with we'll go with this brush stroke, for example. And I'm gonna turn the opacity down a little bit so we can size this down. And yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll turn the opacity back up and I'll use that as a luma mat. And very quickly, instead of hunting through files, then we were just able to quickly navigate through this asset pack to find the asset that was right for our purpose and apply it to our animation. And just to give a quick plug for these asset packs, just because I'm a big fan, um, these are the PQ Grit Kits and PQ Art Parts asset packs on aescripts.com. And they're made by Peter Quinn, who seems like a really cool guy. If you haven't heard his podcast episode on the School of Motion podcast, highly recommend that you go check that out as well. And before we move on to the next section, I want to highlight one more feature of AE Viewer, and that is its ability to store expressions. So in this composition, we have a shape layer that has a circle and also a shape layer that has a path. And then on the position property of the circle layer, we have an expression that causes that circle to be placed on the path according to this slider. So if we wanted to save this expression for later, when you install AE Viewer, if you right click on a property that has an expression, under Keyframe Assistant is a new option called Create Preset from Expression. And actually, before I click that, let me just go back up. I already created a folder called Expressions. Um, so if I right click Keyframe Assistant, Create Preset from Expression, now it'll ask me to name this. So I'll just call this Trace Path Position. And if I say OK, now it says preset has been created. Okay, and now in my folder, we see a new item and this preview that's been generated was actually taken from the current frame of this composition. So now what we can do is if we were to take our shape tool and draw another shape and go into the position property of that new shape and double click on our new expression item, now that expression has been applied and oh, it looks like I need to add that slider back. And now this shape layer has the same expression and can be controlled by that slider. So it's a handy way to make an expression library and store expressions for later use. So when you click the pre-render tab, a new side panel opens up and it says, add your compositions here to convert them to separate projects and automatically create previews for them. So what I've done is I've set up these three separate, very simple comps. One has a blue square moving back and forth, one a green square, and then the last one has a red square. And they're all identical except for the color. But if I select all three of these compositions and click add compositions, they're added to this panel. And if I click render, then I get this message that says previews are ready. You can find them under the same folder as your project file. I'll say OK. And if we navigate up here, this is the demo file that I've been using. And we can see that there's three other projects that are that have been created, one called pre-render blue, one pre-render green, and one pre-render red. And these are from the compositions that I just rendered in our pre-render panel. So this is really handy if you need to split specific compositions off to be their own standalone projects. So the Packages tab, my understanding is mostly for people who buy and use templates. I'm not a big template user myself, so I actually had to learn this just for this tutorial. But it says here will appear purchased and installed projects. So if I click Create Pack, then I have to fill in this dialog box, which I'm going to do quickly. And once I've filled in all this information, I can select the folder where all the files are that I want to include in my template pack. So I have this folder already created called example package content. And then I can select the image for the preview. I want this image. I say OK. And then I say create package. And I say yes, run the script. And what's happened is that that was quite quick. Um, now this test.aev pack file has been created, which is, I believe, a template pack. And if I then in my, I can close this, in my packages side panel, I can say install pack. And I can go and find that AEVP right, right here. If I say OK, now it installs. And we see there's a new item called test, which is the name of the pack. So this Packages tab is really useful for users who buy and sell template packs on sites like VideoHive. And AViewer also has the functionality to be able to create both trial and licensed or paid template packs, where the end user would have to enter in a license key in order to unlock the content. 
There is a complete list of the paid versus free benefits on the AE Viewer page on aescripts.com, but a few of the highlights are that the paid version supports more file formats like Premiere Pro projects, Cinema 4D files, JSON, EPS, M4A, AAC, and a few others. You can only preview and apply fonts in the paid version. The Create Preset from Expression menu option is only in the paid version, as are the scripts and pre-render tabs. Some other considerations before buying are that AE Viewer isn't a file management tool, so you can't copy, paste, or delete files, and that sometimes file previews have to be set up manually. All right, hopefully now you have enough information to decide if AE Viewer is right for you. And if you like our videos, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the notification bell, as well as the like button on this video. All right, thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Marston. Have a good day.